I came back here in 1995 and um, my brother and I, my sisters, my uncle were the first ones to start settling the reserve. Uh, I was out west in, and spent a lot of time in Alberta with the Métis community um, as well and uh, done a lot of work with, uh, most, most of all of my work has been with the Native community. Uh, out west in, when I was out with the Métis community, I did a lot of work with the Métis community, Métis Child and Family Services. I was pretty, uh, pretty involved and active in that community. So, but I wanted to come back and search my roots back home again. So um, I had lost my status when I got married back in 1971. So, so when when Bill C-31 came into effect, I was able to, to get my status back. And of course, I wanted to come back home to my own community, which was, you know, Monopate, but never settle. So we were the first ones to settle here. I always grew up knowing who I was as um, an Indigenous person. I knew I was Métis and Ojibwe, and that was reinforced by the people in my life, the community that I was surrounded with. But the sense of a reservation system or Indian Act status didn't play into who I was until I was older and I obtained my status and we moved to the reserve. I grew up here with my mom. She did a lot of the work on the land claim and I was influenced by the work that she did with my, with my uncle. I raised my children here and now I myself have become involved in the research. Well, through the research myself, I've learned that there's a greater understanding that needs to be had. Um, for instance, there's a lot of personal stories that need to be told that haven't been told, including my mother's own stories or the stories of the our ancestors, and that we don't all have the same shared history or lived experiences. And I think for me, starting in my work, and in my discussions with my mom, we do have a disconnect with community coming from those differences in our shared history or experiences. And it seems almost as if importance isn't given to the significance of our ancestral band and members. And that's what gives me a sense of belonging. But I feel like through the research and telling those personal stories, it can lead to a greater understanding we can acknowledge our unique histories and our experiences and come together and be more unified and have a sense of belonging. To, 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 that disconnection is so real because it's hard to pull a community together when groups of people are coming from different First Nations because, because our, our, our band was pretty dispersed among other First Nations uh, communities, established um, First Nations communities. So the people that are now residing here have their, their, their roots in other First Nations. And so, so now to, to try and pull together and reconnection and find those common threads that connect us is basically, I think, a whole basic of what this research is pulling it together to see what are our common threads what how can we have a story that we can pull together you know what using all these different stories of this connection I think we're getting there and we're pulling that up and and to be able to present that to the community here um, especially those young people that are being born here now they you know they're you know their roots and they're gonna they're be they're being rooted here in this community and and so they need to find that common thread that pulls all of us together.